There's no doubt that sometimes life can seem like a rat race. Work, school, obligations, bills, housework, homework, and then you get up and it starts all over again. Many would say that's life, but sometimes the pressures can get to a point where you just burn out. Twin sisters and authors, Emily and Amelia Nagoski, have released a new book called Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle, and their research looks at how women specifically can overcome the challenges that lead to burnout. I'm a sex educator primarily. I was working as the director of wellness education at Smith College and decided to write a book about the things I was teaching there about sexuality, which came out in 2015. And then I was traveling all over talking to women about the science of women's sexuality. And women kept saying to me, sure, Emily, all that science about sex is great, but you know what really changed my life was that one chapter about stress and emotions. That really changed everything for me. And I was really surprised. So I brought that to Amelia, who is my identical twin sister. And she was like, no, duh, of course it is. Because uh, life I, is stressful, right? Yes, I was not surprised because I'm a choral conductor. And as part of my musical training and as part of my work as a conductor, I had to learn to feel my feelings for performances on stage. And I have to ask my singers to do the same thing. So I know it does not come naturally to people. I know that they have to be taught, but that it is a learnable skill. However, my training limited that to uh, being on stage. And when I learned to do it in real life, it genuinely, I believe, saved my life twice. Tell me a little bit about that, because I know a lot of us will say we've experienced burnout in, in one way or another, but, but what happened to you? I was in my doctoral program, and I was under a lot of stress. It was a lot of work to do, very little sleep, and pressures coming from a lot of different directions. As an adult student, that's a complicated life to live. Uh, in addition to that, there was the added sexism of being a woman conductor, and just the fact that I was a woman meant that I didn't meet people's expectations as to what a conductor should be, and I felt this guilt like I ought to be able to change who I am in order to meet their expectations. Expectations. And that's a very hard position to be in and a very stressful one. So by the middle of my second year of coursework, I ended up in the hospital. I had stress-induced inflammation that was causing me severe pain. Uh, and I realized I need to learn something new. So I called my sister, who has a PhD in public health, and I said, what am I doing wrong? And what was your answer to her? How do you help somebody in that situation? Because obviously you're not the only person who has faced you know, those kinds yeah. of circumstances in the workplace. I've been amazed actually, as we talk about the book, I thought Amelia's story was very extreme, but we have heard from so many women who were very literally hospitalized with stress-induced illnesses and chronic pain. So I told her what I tell people, which is that there's a difference between dealing with the stressors in your life, like the sexism in your program, and being a step-parent and all the rest of it, and the process of dealing with the physiological stress in your body. Those are two separate processes and you have to do both. She was trying so hard to stay on top of all the stressors and just sort of living from the neck down, ignoring the physiological stress that was happening in her body until it ultimately destroyed an organ. So what, what is the solution? What's, I mean, so you have to deal with both. How do you do that? Step one is completing the stress response cycle. As Emily was saying, stress is a physiological process. It happens in your body. It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh, it was evolved for us back in our evolutionary ancestors uh, in order to save us from being chased by lions. And in that circumstance, you run away from the lion, then you're, the thing that saves you also completes the stress response cycle. So you have dealt with the stressor and the stress itself at the same time. Unfortunately, sexism and parenting are stresses that you cannot escape by running away from them as much as you may want to. But in your case, you were also going through um, getting your doctorate. Yes. And that is a big thing sitting on your shoulder. So yeah. did you have to complete that to kind of like feel like you could breathe? Or is that what you're saying? No. Because the doctoral program and parenting and all the kinds of stressors that people live with are the stressors. So for me, it was a wonderful experience to complete my doctorate, but the thing that saved my life was dealing with the physiological stress response cycle in my body. Okay, so how did you do that? There are, there's lots of ways that we talk about in the book. Um, I was already doing the things that I thought I had been told that complete the cycle, like physical activity. I was working out three and four times a week, doing yoga, elliptical. I thought that I was already taking care of business, but it turns out, 
no, that doesn't work for everybody. While running away from the lion will save you and complete the stress response cycle, that is not the only way that you can complete the cycle, and it doesn't work for some people. It's also not accessible for everyone, people who live with chronic pain, people who are, have different abilities. So for me, the thing that worked was engaging my imagination as a musician and an artist, it was really natural for me to use self-expression and to imagine a story where uh, I made my way through the stress. If you've ever woken up in the middle of the night um, sweating with fear, that's your imagination initiating a stress response cycle. And the flip side, that's the good news of that, is that your imagination can complete a stress response cycle. So while I was on the elliptical machine, I would imagine myself as Godzilla tromping the state land grant institution where I was a student, like the administration building and the parking lot. And at the end of that workout, I wasn't just hot and sweaty and tired like all my other workouts. I felt elated mm -hmm. and thrilled, comfortable, and empowered. And at the end of it, really, you want to be able to help people deal with it because life is hard, right? I mean, life is always going to have the stressors that you're talking about, which can lead to the, the physical part as well. But that's life. It can be awful and really difficult, but how do you encourage people um, who have, you know, many different tasks that they have to complete, you know, whether it's, you know, a mom working, um, you know, diff different things happening with your teenagers, things at work. How do you encourage uh, people to pursue and kind of persevere through that? There's a few different ways I try to motivate people to do these sort of practices that help you to reduce the level of stress that's physically in your body. A straightforward one is if you're a mother, you know that you need to be in a sort of like minimal level of well-being in order to be the parent that you want to be. So I can uh, argue that in order to be a great caretaker, of course you have to take care of yourself. I can also argue from a more political perspective that, you know what, like the white supremacists, cis hetero patriarchal world of like that tells you that you're not allowed to be in positions of power, that you don't deserve access to certain resources in your life, really thrives when women don't feel well enough to fight for equal rights and for access to positions of power and privilege. And so the way to, you know, smash the patriarchy is for us to take really good care of each other. But that's going like way above, like, I mean, just for everyday life, right? I mean, you were talking about something political and really high. I am, yeah. but there are people who are watching who are saying, listen, you know what? I have a really busy week sure. and I want to get to the ends and I want my kids to be well. I want to be well. How do I do it? Yeah, so I think that remembering that your life is embedded in a larger structure, that there are reasons why it's hard. It's not just hard because life is complicated. It's hard because there are structures in place that put obstacles between you and your own well-being. If it feels difficult, that's not random. That's because there are things in your way, some of which were put there on purpose to make it more difficult for you to access your own well-being. And when I think about that, I get really angry. And what I want women to do is to sort of access that frustration, sometimes that rage. Accessing rage was super important for Amelia, recognizing that her program wasn't difficult just because it was difficult. It was difficult because she's the only woman ever in the history of that program to finish that program. That's not random. And when you can access that rage and use it as a motivation to take awesome care of yourself and the people you love, that's intensely empowering. It's a fierce motivation.